Hey everybody, I am Andrew. And I'm Paul. And welcome to the Fan Voice episode 8. Uh, crazy, number crazy 8. Crazy 8. And it's, uh, we're talking about Kill a Kill today, which is a topic that a lot of people I think want us to talk about. It's a topic I want to talk about. I want to talk about Because it's a pretty too. interesting fucking show. And, and it's, it's crazy. Se- and it's severely, <laughs> severely crazy. hype. Um, oh, and that very wonderful laughing you hear in the yeah. background <laughs> is our good buddy, Connor Tridey, who is going to be guest starring this evening with us yes. because he is a huge Kill a Kill fan and he's definitely got some awesome opinions to bring to the table. And I think we'll we'll round all of us all together. So yeah. say hi, Connor. Hey, everyone. Thank you for having me on the show. I'm a huge fan of the fan voice. Um, so it's an honor to be here, especially to talk about Kill a Kill. It's a very exciting uh, anime to talk about mm-hmm. uh, in general. So... Yeah, I mean, is there anything else that my huh? my eye color, my my gender, my favorite kind of pie? No, you're you're good. Okay, you're what's good. your favorite number? Uh, I kind of do like the number eight, actually. So I guess Shit. we love because out. it's crazy. Because right? I'm so fate. crazy. It's fate that you're on the podcast now. Yes, you were the yes. best choice. I mean, it's obvious <laughs> at this point. I am the chosen one. <laughs> the stars are. <laughs> All right, so let's we'll start off with the shout-outs from last week, and we have just basically one big one. Yeah, so. Melissa Hernandez gave us so much love this shout-out from our last podcast talking about uh, um, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, and yeah, tons of comments, and uh, our first piece of fan art. <laughs> Do you want to start with the fan art? Which was awesome. Oh my gosh, um, so... It's really, it's really awesome. So, <laughs> so last week we, I just made a stupid joke about where you go from Alpha and Omega, and I said it was, uh, um, was it God, uh, Black, God Black and, and Jesus and White? <laughs> and she totally took Morgan Freeman and made it God Black and a picture of Jesus and made Jesus White. And I would buy that. I would buy that. I so would buy who would it? If Morgan Freeman was narrating it, of course. Oh, oh wow. my god! Yeah, I would. I would pre-order. I would go to the midnight release. I would get. Both. I would wait in line. Yeah, I would. Get, I would get both. I totally get both. Welcome, young uh... trainer. Are you a boy or a girl? <laughs> you know, I wonder Morgan if that would Freeman. mean that. I wonder if that would mean that Arceus would be the starter Pokemon. Or at least one of the oh, starters. Oh my God. gosh. Can you imagine? I think you're onto something there. <laughs> Nintendo, uh, Game Freak specifically, if you're listening. Yeah. Um, God I, Black and Jesus I have a White. resume that I can send your yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Melissa are also said. Um, oh, I guess we'll talk about the hat yeah, thing. Yeah, definitely. So this was something I, we didn't know before. I, I've, yeah, I don't I've know if you knew it. this about the third gen hero. How his hat, the white thing, is his hat. Yeah, yeah. I I, I didn't know that. We were we were talking. Oh, you did? <laughs> no, we were talking in the podcast about. Oh well, um, the hero just wears a bandana so we could see our hair more. If it if we did custom characters, but <laughs> no, I, I didn't it looks even like know. his hair to me. It looked like his hair in the sprites, and so I was just like, it oh, does. it's totally yeah. his it, hair. It's That's a totally funky fair. hat. Yeah. Yeah, but then but, I saw art later, and I was like, "Oh, it's totally not." Yeah, it's really funny. Melissa pointed that out yeah. to us, and then um, <laughs> one one last com- one last big comment from her, uh, just her excitement for the game and what she's looking forward to. I'm excited for Alpha Sapphire slash Omega Ruby. I come from the perspective of Gen Three being my first gen, which is awesome, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. I, I haven't heard of that being a case. In a while, like I have, I've never heard of somebody like that was their first Pokemon. I know a handful, mm-hmm. but Aaron, that was yeah, his that's, first. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Um, and and the one that hooked me into the franchise being Gen Three, mm-hmm. I'm excited to see how they make use of the 3D and hope uh, that for more customization is available. Yeah. Also, if they make use of Street Pass for secret bases, that would be so cool. Oh, that's a really good. So I really like that point a lot. Yeah, is using like the geographic and the the street pass functionality. That'd be really cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, since street pass is such a huge thing into the three DS experience right now, it would only Definitely. make sense for them to finally integrate it into yeah. a Pokemon game. <laughs> and 
Finally, she says, imagine what new items and Pokemon furniture they could have. It's the, it's the cute little details that are not exactly necessary for the plot that really hook me into the series. And, you know, I, I can agree with that to a certain yeah. point. I, I think, I think all details. of us were, like, jumping for joy when we first got character customization thing. Oh, definitely. That's yeah. where all my money went to. The clothes. I would go back and fight the Elite Four. I was like, okay, I gotta stock up on some money so I can buy more clothes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, like, that whole, the middle city, what is it called again? The Lumios? really big one? Lumios, Lumios. Yeah. that's it. That really made you think about your finances. Oh, yeah. Like, Again, <laughs> taxis are, and clothes are expensive. How much can I spend here? Yeah, really. Breaking the bank. I gotta think about my money for the first time ever. <laughs> that's so true. But yeah, that's really true. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. So, yeah, those are all the points Melissa made. Thank you so much for uh, all your support on yeah, this week's podcast. Yeah, huge shout out to you, Melissa. Yeah. Thank your you uh, your your post your fan art made my made my day it's, when I saw it. So it was awesome. It's the thank beginning you. of something. Thank you so much for thank that. Thank you. <laughs> it was amazing. And then uh, just one short shout out to uh, Atticus Ponce who shared episode number seven. Uh, good yeah. guy, good guy Atticus strikes. <laughs> good, again. Guy, good guy, Atticus. good guy Atticus <laughs> strikes once more. Yeah, it seems and like that happens every podcast. But yeah, you're awesome, Atticus. Thank you. Thank you so much. And All right. So let's go to the news. Um, Some news. Do you want to introduce yeah, the first so one? Yeah, so the first one is that the Xbox One, Microsoft has released, uh, they've revealed that they're going to have an Xbox One without the Kinect. So I think that the backpedaling is fully complete by this point. Because mm-hmm. they pretty much started out E3 like, you're going to have, you're going to have to be this online. angry tyrants. Yeah, yeah. you're going to have to be online. There's no used games. You're going to have to use Kinect. And now they have gone back on literally everything they said. Mm-hmm. Pretty okay. much. Including the TV thing, which was like, now they hardly have any TV functionality with it. And uh-huh. that was like their big thing. They're going to have original programming. And I think my, that's f- my favorite point um, through this backpedaling process was right after E3, because basically PS3 slapped them in the face with all of their like strict rules. And literally right after E3, they're like, Oh, never mind. Yeah, you can have used games. You can do all that. Yeah. It, it was really funny. They went opinion. back on it. So yeah, this is kind of full. It's it's kind of finally done. The 180 is complete. Just about. Yeah. <laughs> Almost. Yeah, really. <laughs> um. So I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm kind of glad that they did that, but I'm also also feel like they did it unwillingly. They grudgingly. Of Very did it. begrudgingly, definitely. Yeah, I yeah. do. I do think it was a good step for them to take though mm-hmm. i think mm-hmm. they started e3 it's sort of like going to a buffet but you're being told that you have to eat everything yeah. that's on the table yeah like that's a good point microsoft had a lot of good ideas but none of it was optional and none of it none of it was really malleable to an individual gamer's specific preferences yeah, yeah. and all, all around i think they thought they were more powerful than they were in this particular aspect. That's definitely and then true. Sony literally obliterated them. Yeah, yep. <laughs> literally. They're like, no. You guys remember that little commercial they had, The right? little video? This oh, is how you share games yeah. on PS3. And he hands it to them. Thanks. Thank <laughs> that was literally the... That was, was the best part of E3. That was the best part of E3, yeah. by far. <laughs> that and when he said, and the PlayStation's going to be three ninety nine, and everybody started cheering. Yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah they, they won. <laughs> Pretty much, yep. So yeah, I'm I'm excited to see what happens. You know, mm-hmm. definitely. But. Do you want to give out the next news, CT? Um, well, I don't know too much about it, but I have a lot to say about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, right. but as it would seem, uh, this year at Phoenix Comic Con. Phoenix Comic Con 2014, uh, it looks like it is on the precipice of selling out completely. Yeah. Which, um, and by the way, if you're if you're noticing that my voice sounds a little funny when I oh, talk, yeah. it's because uh, three days ago I had my wisdom teeth pulled out, <laughs> and so uh, my cheeks are a little swollen, so... So we're even more grateful that <laughs> yeah. you're pushing through this for us. Thank you again for being yeah. here. I'm just daughter. so crazy, you know? <laughs> you, are, you are. You're a crazy ape. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, but yeah, no, this is uh, this is really cool. Um, so I guess um, 37% of their availability mm-hmm. for tickets and capacity 
at the convention center itself at this point is currently still available to be filled. Um, but that's, then that's it right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, those are for full passes. Um, okay. Like the thirty-seven percent is like for for full weekend passes. Right. And some of them, they say like they have ninety-nine percent availability for Thursday. Yeah. Well, and that's preview. Like, night. That's like the yeah, nothing. You know, day, it's like right? nothing yeah. is going yeah. on on Thursday. I never go so. to preview night. Yeah. Um, but I I find it to be I find it I'm to me it's a little bit of a double-edged sword. Um. I'm really stoked that yeah. I'm really stoked that Phoenix Comic Con is expanding and this um, popular now. Yeah, yeah. yeah my absolutely. very first. I've been going to conventions for almost eight years now, mm -hmm. and my first convention was Phoenix Comic Con back before the Phoenix Convention Center was built. Mm -hmm. Back when it was, when it was held when it in was a Mesa. tiny little thing Yeah, it was a yep. tiny little thing I in, in Mesa in at Mesa the Mesa Convention, convention Center. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It was a tiny little ragtag thing of a convention. Yeah. And since then, it's grown huge. And so I'm really happy to see that. Um, something that I'm concerned about for happening in the future, not anytime soon really, but it's it's not, uh, it's plausible for Phoenix Comic Con to reach this point. Um, I've gone to San Diego Comic Con three times, mm -hmm. and I can tell you how much of a hassle it is to try to get try to get in the following year because the yeah. instant the instant that passes go on sale servers crash they sell out immediately yeah. they have rev they true. have they allocate an amount of passes for people who attended the previous year so they have mm -hmm. priority it's you you got to you got to go on an exodus you got to jump through hoops just to get a pass for the yeah. next year and beyond that it's just really really crowded um mm -hmm. and so San Diego Comic Con is definitely something that you want to do at least once in your lifetime. Yeah, I've done yeah. it three times, and I'm pretty satisfied at this point. <laughs> yeah, so. I mean, even last year's Phoenix Comic Con, I felt was a little o overwhelming with the yeah. amount of crowds and, and I mean, stuff. Like Saturday and everything, I felt like I was at Disneyland and, or at something. Some, you at know, some just point, shuffling through yeah. pools of people and a in great certain areas. Yeah, a great example of that is like the fire marshal coming in last year right. and, yeah. Yeah. and Some, being like you have to shut down the exhibit hall and it's like wow that's like i don't know if she was like over the top about it or like that's a legitimate concern but that's a lot of people. probably why they've capped it this year you know taking some precautions yeah, on seeing those events that's again. definitely true yeah. um i don't know for me i i feel the exact same way it's a double-edged sword i'm really glad that it's popular i don't want it to get to the point where it's hard to get a ticket Basically, yeah, no. <laughs> it will rise to fame in itself and lose will love for the locals, kind of thing. Yeah, and I think it's that's a common tale. Yeah, and I think that's already on the way of happening, um, unfortunately. So I, I just, I hope that it's a little bit more. It slows down a little bit, you know, um, or at least but, just never gets to that. Yeah, like, racing for a ticket, kind yeah, of thing. definitely true. We can, we can hope. I'm, I'm gonna be happy either way because. Um, you know, I'll be able to. I'll still be able to look back on when it was yeah, small exactly. and all those, and those really intimate moments that I had with it, and first stepping into convention culture as a whole. And I'll start with Phoenix Comic Con, so I'm really proud of how long a ways the convention itself has gone. Yeah, yeah, it's very, very cool. And so the facts I've never heard. Of, I've never heard of Phoenix Comic Con selling out before. Mm -hmm. there, to my knowledge, there's always been room. You can always show up the day of, get a day yeah. pass, even a full event pass on yeah. Friday. Yeah, exactly. Right. You show right. up Friday morning, I want a full event pass, and you just get one. And so mm -hmm. um, this being the first, you know, seemingly the first time that this has happened is really cool. Yeah. Like, what I can see happening is, I feel like it's still kind of a rising popularity thing, so there's a lot of casual people still checking that out, mm -hmm. rising more and more each mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, if it will sell out in, like, pre-purchase, but I could see it possibly selling out while people are standing in line for tickets kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. You know? and that's a significant worry, too, is, like, then you have people waiting in line, they can't get a ticket. That, yeah. That really sucks. <laughs> That'd be ugly. So, I hope that's not the case. Mm -hmm. um, all right, our last piece of news. Oh, I yeah. guess I'll talk about this one. <laughs> um, so, the, the artist that inspired the original design for Alien... Um, passed away H.R. Giger um, just recently, and um, 
that's a uh, it's sad. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, it's I mean, sad. I don't think anyone could ever replace him, and uh, the alien design is by far the most haunting monster image yeah. I f- feel I've ever seen in a movie kind of thing. It's definitely one of the most iconic monsters in movie history. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so it's it's definitely sad that, you know, he's gone and he won't be able to work because, I mean, Prometheus is... Yeah, he's still going. I mean, he's, too he, he's kind of drifted out of the series, but it would have been nice to see his input into the yeah prequel kind of stuff mm-hmm. that's on the rise right now. Yeah, so that's yeah. really unfortunate. One one thing that was interesting was the the book that inspired Ridley Scott to bring him on mm-hmm. the Necronomicon. The Necronomicon. 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 Yeah. Uh, went through some of the images. Was definitely creeped out. But that <laughs> that might be a good thing, I guess. I think it. I think it definitely monster. was. I think that was definitely an influence on Ridley Scott, being like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna bring him in." But the interesting thing was that um, I I didn't know before, but it seemed like that entire book had a heavy hand in the entire world of the first movie. Basically, you know, yeah. just everything about it felt like the alien world and stuff like that, and. It, he even had one that was, like, super familiar to the, uh, oh, what do you call them? The Prometheus guys. Oh, yeah. Uh, I can't remember their name. I'm blanking. Yeah. But, uh, the Engineers? Is that it? Oh, yes. I think so. Okay, yeah. That, that, um, the original image of them in the first movie where it was, like, mm-hmm. like, a uh, set in stone design kind of thing of him in the ship. Which yeah. was shown in the first mm-hmm. movie. Mm-hmm. That a, a picture almost exactly like that was in there too. Yeah, which definitely a, had a really big influence. You can tell, but like you said, looking just looking through the book. Yeah, you know, you can really tell that that influence is there. Mm-hmm. So it's really unfortunate that he's gone. Yeah, um, yeah, he'll be but, missed, and yeah, no one will give me better nightmares than him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, so so I think that's it. We for have come the, to the main uh, topic. Yeah. Um, of Kill a Kill. Of kill so. a Kill. So, um, for those who have not seen Kill a Kill, I don't know if you should be watching this because we're heading into spoiler territory. So, if you wanna, if you wanna turn it off, you can, you can absolutely do that. But um, for for huge time fans, you should definitely listen to our opinions and then yeah. comment back and give your own opinions. Or yeah, say please. Who you agree with? Blah, blah, this blah, is blah, one. Blah. This is one thing we really want a lot of interaction on. I feel like this show is kind of split. It's not like split down in the middle, like people hate it or love it, but it's it's there's some interesting conversations happening. So yeah, mm-hmm. um, you know, tell us what's up. And I think the, th- the three of us together will cover yeah. that spectrum very very well. <laughs> Connor is a huge fan of it and loves this anime. I I have a ton of pro- problems with it, honestly. And then Andrew's kind of in the middle. I'm I'm yeah. in the middle. I'm definitely yeah. in the middle. Yeah. So I mean, we'll just start off discussion i guess i thought what we could do is oh, each, yeah. each give like an un- a quick uninterrupted opening remark oh for okay. our overall impression and then we could cool. get into it speech okay. and debate class yeah. going on right sure. now <laughs> all right so i'm gonna start i'll go with me since it's more negative <laughs> <laughs> we'll guess. end on a positive note all yeah, right yeah okay yeah <laughs> okay so um this anime produced by Trigger, um, I had really high hopes for it as far as, like, after Gurren Logan, which is an mm-hmm. anime I really liked, but, um, uh, two of my hugest banes with anime that I don't enjoy is fan service and, uh, cutesy schoolgirls, and <laughs> this, uh, <laughs> this anime hit really, really hard on those points, and it seemed to never go away kind of thing until almost the very 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 end and i tried really hard but those things kept popping up and it kept detracting me detracting me detracting me and like there are parts i enjoyed but so so many of the those things kept popping up i can't say it was an overall enjoyable series for me and for those who um are okay with that or enjoy the goofy schoolgirls or the fan service and stuff. I can understand that, but I don't think this show breaks barriers. Uh, that's my opinion okay. about it. CT, you want to go and then I'll. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, 
Well, similar to Paul, um, this show had a very good... Before it even came out, it, it already had a very strong opening impression. Uh, Studio Trigger is pretty spanking new uh, yep. to the anime world. It was ba brand new. It's basically like a small team of people who broke off from Gainax. Mm -hmm. um, and so we say they, they gave us Kill a Kill. They also gave us Little Witch Academia. Which, is, which was pretty good. Oh, it's phenomenal. Yeah, you yeah. can watch the entire first episode... Uh, legally and for free on YouTube, and uh, a second episode is in the works. They got a Kickstarter, which was very successfully funded. Um, and so, yeah, I had high hopes. Um, I was like, these people have produced some really awesome stuff. A lot of people that were involved in Gurren Lagann are going to be involved in Kill a Kill. What can you know? What 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 else do you need? Yeah. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I, I watched the first episode. I thought it was completely awesome. Um, um, Action through the roof, awesome action, um, gr beautiful animation. It had the, the same ruggedness that Gurren Lagann also possesses that I find very appealing. It's not super clean cut, it's a little gritty, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, you just get right into the thick of it. And um, I am, you know, I, I do like that it is off the walls, and for a while it is pretty scatterbrained. You're trying to figure everything out but um as we go into it more later i think um i think that it's intentional um the, the pacing and the presentation of everything being that way i think it's intentional and that it's justified because i think we're supposed to be following ryuko on her journey of self-discovery discovering everything that's around her and figuring out what she's going to do about it and what we're going to think of it uh -huh. as the viewers and so um, yeah, the entire show is like a really fun roller coaster. And I don't, I don't necessarily think that, you know, the plot and structure of a show should always resemble that of a roller coaster, but given the actual plot and, uh, you know, the characters themselves, I think that they do it justice. And I don't really know how else they would do it, mm -hmm. honestly, either, so... I think right. it's a, I think it's a solid show through and through. All right, so I am kind of on the fence, uh, and the reason I say that is that I'm a huge fan of Gurren Logan, so uh, Kill a Kill's visual style interests me. Um, I think the way that they break the fourth wall consistently is one of the best the best things about a, a, a kind of visual style like this. Mm -hmm. The medium of anime allows for that mm -hmm. so much better than other mediums. And I really appreciate the fact that they go for interesting breaking the fourth wall and, you know, suddenly Gamagori's huge and everybody <laughs> else is really small and it's a really interesting visual style. Mm -hmm. So visual style alone, it's packed with really interesting things. Mm -hmm. um, and I appreciate that a lot. Um, but I think kind of in the what, what you were saying, CT, about, um, you know, the it's a little bit maybe scatterbrained, I guess, is, is the word you used. Yeah. And, and, I think, uh, for me personally, it was a lot about thematic consistency. So, like, themes would come up, and this is my major problem with the show, themes would come up for about two episodes, and then they would kind of drop off, and then different ones would be brought in, you know, every couple episodes. And it felt, like you were saying, kind of disjointed and kind of maybe all over the place. And that so that was my major problem with the show. But I can totally see what you're saying about, you know, Ryoko being... It's, it's about her self-discovery and about her journey. Um, but for me, I just, that kind of irked me a little bit. And then, of course, the fan service, and we'll get into this later. Right. Um, you can, I don't think that all of it can be justified, personally. Um, and so that was a giant detractor for me as well. Um, I think some of it is. So I'm kind of, uh, I think, maybe in the middle of you guys <laughs> on that one specifically, yeah. is I think some of it is justified. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think all of it is. Um, and there are certain scenes in certain parts that seem a little over the top for me mm -hmm. and not needed. So that's where I'm coming from on that. Um, but, okay, so now that we've all kind of said uninterrupted stuff, yeah. um, let's just start out with the fan service because I think that's the thing that a lot of people talk about. Yeah. Um, and I just want to point out a point right now. There are a lot of great articles. If you're looking for anything, you should look at 
for some dissenting opinions for people like uh, Bobda. He's a blogger, an anime blogger. He did a great Kill a Kill piece. And there's a couple other people that talk about the other side of it. Yeah. People that think Kill a Kill fan service is, is justified and very good. So just search online. There's some great articles on, uh, on there to kind of talk a little bit more. But let's talk about just, you know, the fan service. And obviously the biggest thing is the outfits, the uniforms, the... Yes. The comics. So... I don't know. Let's start at the beginning <laughs> okay. and, and just say, like, r starts right out by uh, your first kind of, yeah, I think it's in episode three, if I'm correct, where she kind of transforms into her, uh, you know, into her actual fighting uniform. Um, and it, right, she's she's talking to the uniform uh -huh. a lot. Senketsu. Senketsu, yeah. yes. Uh, Kamui, right? Is that yeah, that's they're what they're called. Yeah, yeah. Um So yeah, she's talking to Sinketsu this whole time, and then she has to give it a sacrifice of blood in order for this uniform to turn into this ultra-powerful self. Well, mm -hmm. when it gets turned into that, it's a very revealing outfit. Yeah. The transformation sequence is very revealing. Mm -hmm. And I think, by all accounts, that's something that goes under the fan service banner for anime. I don't know if you guys agree. But, I mean, that's something that people would just call fan service. Right. Um, so there's a lot of, but there's a lot of dissenting opinions that that's justified, that there's a reason that it's like that. So correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm, or that you don't agree, CT, but yeah. uh, the giving of the blood is like kind of an allegory to female puberty. Because, I mean, mm -hmm. this show is, Kill It Kills by the same writer as Gurren Lagann. And Gurren Lagann is male puberty, and it's, and it's growing up as a guy. <clears throat> Right. right. Being a man, yeah. Being a man. This show is a little bit about being a woman. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely a good parallel to that. Right. And it's actually, that's one of my favorite parts about the show, is that it's very much like that. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, this is, so that's kind of why these dissenting opinions show up about the uniforms is, well, it makes sense. You give it blood. And then there's a lot of questions about... But uh, why... Why are you revealing uniforms then? I understand the blood part. Okay, so the the kind of opinion on this is that... Um, it, so, okay, so you understand the blood part. The revealing part is kind of... They kind of talk about it a little bit. You shouldn't be embarrassed by yourself. Yeah. Right? Okay. It's a lot about self-confidence. And mm -hmm. that's what I'm going to be driving a lot to yeah. in this discussion. Yeah, so, uh, I mean... It's it's kind of like so you kind of agree it's it's about like self confidence and basically uh, and Satsuki says at some point um, who is the you know obviously the head of this enormous school and she wears it proudly and they have their first fight mm -hmm. and she says you're if you're embarrassed you're never gonna beat me right so it's a lot about having self confidence not being embarrassed by who you are in your body as you're growing up that you're able to overcome your problems mm -hmm. in life right yeah. And I get that. Mm -hmm. I just want to point that out. Yeah. I actually thought that was great. Right. I was like, wow, that's really awesome. My problem is I feel like it drops that. It drops it in favor of other themes. And we lose kind of a... She's never embarrassed for the rest of the series. So... Well, okay, I what think, were you going to say? Well, I think it's because um, she's starting to... She's starting to find out who she is. And... Okay. I mean, when you look at the overall, the big picture of Kill a Kill, um, this is going to start dabbing into spoiler territory here. Um, Just go for it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you you look at Ragiro, uh, Satsuki's mother, um, who um, is the leader of the largest clothing mm -hmm. uh, company in the whole wide world, and it's her ultimate goal to dress everybody in her clothing Right. To which she can control using the life right. fibers and mm -hmm. stuff. And <clears throat> Ryuko, Nudist Beach, and eventually um, the members of the Academy run by Satsuki. Right. They all yeah. join the Resistance. Mm -hmm. And it's really just, I think it's just a statement to, like, you know, what you wear doesn't define you. And mm -hmm. it should not. And that people who are in charge of fashion and in charge of what people look like on the outside, that shouldn't be what you take to heart. And so okay. I think that's also, you know, I think that complements the fact that everyone in nudist speech is completely naked. Well, yeah. <laughs> and so definitely. 
And no one cares that everyone is naked either. And so, um, yeah, there, I'm, I'm not denying that for a second that this show Kill a Kill is not riddled in fan service. And, you know, honestly, I'm sure a lot of people went to this show for the fan service, mm -hmm. but I can promise you that they stayed for something else. And so, um, yeah, the blood thing, I, I totally see where people are coming from about that being, being an allegory to female puberty. Mm -hmm. I personally never looked at it that way, but that doesn't mean that that theory is incorrect or that people yeah. are wrong for choosing to subscribe to that theory. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm always going to say that Kill a Kill is a very character-driven show. Um, we see that with the relationship between Ryuko and Mako, Ryuko and Senketsu, and in the end, Ryuko and Satsuki. Um, and so, it's just, um, you know, I had a really good thing going, and then my thought <laughs> just uh, it flew out. Yeah. Um very right no i got it i got it back and okay. so with, with so with with the blood thing i think that i think that was just uh a staple for ryuko and senketsu's uh relationship okay um i think senketsu started out as a weapon and then they became like partners and then yeah. senketsu became an extension of ryuko yeah. And I think the blood thing was just sort of a segue for that character okay. development. Yeah. Now, there is one thing, probably the biggest symbolic thing or the symbolism I got out of it mm -hmm. was when um, she found out who killed her dad and got enraged and turned into this giant beast monster thing, splurting blood everywhere. I personally thought that was symbolism for a girl on her period. <laughs> so, and that's, and that's, oh boy. and that's another big theory that people have. And that's another one I've read. And it's another one I kind of got too, honestly. Mm -hmm. Now, that one I didn't get to the point where I was like, oh yeah, that's obviously what it is. But I understood it and I felt like that... I don't know that that's intentional, but I almost feel as if, as if it's intentional. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I I take a lot of stock in that theory. I think it's yeah. it's it's a pretty convincing one because I think you look at the whole series and how it's drawn out and her relationship with that. I think that's kind of a an allegory and a symbol for that. Absolutely. Um, so, just to go back on the fan service thing a little bit. Uh -huh. um, so. So you were saying, like, fan service has a lot to do with this concept of, like, nudity, basically, right? And, right. like, not letting clothes and people in the fashion industry control you. Um, and I like that a lot. So my 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 other question, though, is um, nudist beach and the people in nudist beach, yeah. right? There's <laughs> there's every single scene, every single chance they get, he's, like, stripping. Yes. Right? Yeah. Now, my question to you guys is, what was your – like, what was your – your thoughts on that from a is it just a joke perspective like do you guys think it, that it was oh it's just a funny joke or what are they trying to say with that i'm actually curious what you guys think i really think that it i think it was just a, a humorous okay. thing and he was he's just he's a flamboyant character and i think <laughs> he that, definitely is i think yeah. that's something that you you should apply when watching this show and trying to understand everything that goes on is it is understanding the studio in which it comes from understanding trigger understanding what these people have put out in the past and what you accepted in their previous works mm -hmm. and so i mean uh, there was a lot of just i think there was a lot of over the top stuff in this show mm -hmm. just for the sake mm -hmm. of being over the top there was certainly never a dull moment and yeah. so, like, even, like, you know, like, his nipples were always glowing purple, too. Like, yeah. always. And actually, I mean, I personally, I, I know Paul probably didn't like this, that. This but, was one of the biggest yeah, things that I, drove me insane. <laughs> I personally I thought it was really I, I can't explain it, really. Um, so, I definitely agree that looking at a studio standpoint, in, in Gurren Logan, they were definitely silly like this, but I feel like in Kill La Kill... Especially with what's this guy's name? Do you remember the leader of nudist speech? Yeah, I wish. No, I don't remember. Okay, glowing nipples, man. We know who we're all talking <laughs> yeah, it's about. Glowing but nipples, man. him along with Mako's silliness. But we'll stick. Just stick with him for now. The silliness was there, 
but I don't think they ever pulled it back at the right times. So, like, there were there were always some intense moments or moments when they're trying to explain a plan, but he was always still there. His close... I remember specifically he was strategically trying to, like, explain a specific plan, and then his clothes just start slipping off and his <laughs> nipples glowing. I'm like, I, I can't focus on the plan. I can't focus because this crap is happening in my so, face kind of so thing. I, and, like, a couple times during the really long fights or whatever, or intense fights, it'll cut back to people watching, and there he is, nipples a-glowing and stuff like that. I'm like, I'm detracted again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I understand, I understand what you're saying, that you are kind of constantly distracted by him. So I have a theory, and this is, uh, this is something I've heard a little bit about, but not really something that I uh, have, like, seen everywhere, like uh -huh. other theories. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that partially is intentional. And I think it's a commentary on the way that female characters are... That's constantly happening with female characters in other shows. I can so see that they're very, trying to balance instance, out the instance, sexuality to Code, try, yeah. try to water down Geass, the male yeah, gaze. A, a great example is in Code Geass. That happens occasionally. It's a very serious show, right? Mm -hmm. And almost too serious at times where I'm like, okay, Code Geass, that was ridiculous. You need to calm down, right? When there's other parts where there's just fucking like just Collins boobs hanging out, mm -hmm. and it's like, and and while I'm watching the show, I recognize that. So while I'm watching Kill a Kill, that started happening occasionally, right? In these very serious scenes, his clothes would start to slip off, yeah. and I found that funny. But during those serious scenes, I was the same way. I was like, well, that wasn't. I, I felt wasn't like this series right? didn't know when to pull back okay, the series. So Pull so, yeah. back the moment so and you I can thinking, really get into it. You know? And I was thinking about that, too, until I started thinking about, what if it is a commentary on that? And then that scene takes on a whole different perspective. A lot of the times. Now, sometimes I, I still agree with you. Even with mm -hmm. this theory in place, I still agree with you. Yeah. Because sometimes it's just a little bit too much, and I felt like... Uh, I, I felt you know, like Gurren Lagann had a better hold on that. So you know? I'll agree, except for the fact that Yoko exists. And, oh, yeah. and pretty much yeah. anything that happens with Yoko is during a serious scene, scene, and all you need to see is her, because it, it breaks the it breaks the scene's immersion. Well, she's in a fucking bikini and she's got a giant sniper rifle. Well, so, I mean, I, <laughs> it's it's not like well, that's just her character design. But this guy, her character design, flying off glowing the, no, nipples. Does it's, character it's design not include personality though? Because what I would argue. Mean? Like, I think character design includes personality. Yeah. So, like, this guy's character design is that he's like that. So, I, and I think, it, I seriously think, this is the only theory that, for some reason, I like to kind of acclaim to, I think that's supposed to be a commentary on that. It's supposed to be a commentary on how ridiculous these other shows and how serious they take these moments. I don't know. With I, some girl's boobs hanging out in the corner, right? And. Well, I'd have to say be behavior has something to do with it, too, like an action with it, which is why um, him stripping all the time, and okay. then also Mako being a crazy little girl that she always is kind of thing is a little more distracting okay. to all me right. than, than Yoko just yeah. standing there. Okay, so, you know? well, uh, yeah. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you. I was just, I was just, I personally think that Gurren Lagann still had those elements, mm -hmm. and I think you might be right. I think this one takes it further. Yeah. But for me, but it was it was distracting in moments, I agree. Mm -hmm. But in other moments, I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. Sometimes it, I was I, like, okay, tone it down. I just thought it was... Th there were definitely ridiculous moments in Gurren Lagann. I just think the quality and the places placed in it were much bigger in this one. I've, so, like, the, the couple parts in Gurren Lagann when people died, completely immersed. The ending, completely immersed for me kind of thing, you know? Okay. So. All right. Okay, well, you know, I, I, yeah. I respect yeah. it. I, mean, I still yeah. think that, and, and we'll, we'll, go, we'll go to Mako now, because I don't know about <laughs> you, I like Mako. I like Did... Mako, too. <laughs> I... <laughs> so, okay. okay, Mako is one thing that I, I kind of agree with you with this glowing nipples guy, right? Mm -hmm. Like, he's ridiculous, he's over the top, and in some serious moments, I'm like, I didn't, I didn't really need that, right? I didn't need you to be there. Mako, I was always, like, every time Hallelujah came up, I was like, hell yeah. It's I was like, 
Oh, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> I was the complete opposite. All right, like, okay. Oh, uh, just make it stop. So let's. Oh, I'm not you want to? You want to talk about why? Why you like Mako? I mean, sure. she's just fun. I, go for it. I I love Mako. Um, because like, okay, yeah, she's really really bubbly. She's bouncing off the walls all the time, and she can. Yeah, I I can totally see why you find her to be as annoying as you do, but um. There's so much to appreciate about Mako because I've said this before, but I haven't said it on the show or even voiced it to you mm -hmm. before. Um, but I, I believe that Mako is what I believe that Mak Mako is to Ryuko in the same way that what Nia is to Simone. Um, I think Mako saves Ryuko and you see that literally multiple times throughout the show. Um, Mako can be really obnoxious, but she has a lot of heart. And mm -hmm. I derive that from all of the characters and basically from the show as a whole. I don't take... There's a lot of serious things that do happen in the show, but I don't take the show too seriously because mm -hmm. I, I recognize that the show is self-aware, but I also recognize that the show itself has a lot of heart. Mm -hmm. And so... Mako is paramount to the show because the show is about Ryuko's journey and Mako is paramount to Ryuko's journey. And so um, she, she's always able to pull through. She, she, nothing dampens her spirits and there's a lot of things that Ryuko faces so, that get her down and Mako is always immediately there to pick her back up. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and I think that that's, what makes her a good foil for Mako and yes. for, for Ryoko and, and why I think she's a, a worthwhile character because she's so ridiculous. She's so over the top, but she, she makes the impossible possible. And she does all these things that Ryoko never thinks are humanly possible. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I, I would agree to a certain extent that she can get kind of obnoxious. I mean, the constant, like, it's. I think the, the the other part of this is that uh, this anime likes to do a lot of yelling. Yep. <laughs> and if you're having one of those days, it's like, wow, this is a lot to take in right now. It's like, what are you? What are you saying? Exactly. Now? Yeah. Uh, and, oh, and it's gone. It's, the subtitles it's, are gone. It's, oh, <laughs> seriously, it's fast. It's like gone in two seconds, and it's loud, and it's in your face, and uh, yeah. Once again, I think that's part of the style, right? Right. Right. And I mean, I think we pretty much all agree with that. That's that's just part of the style, but. Yeah. I, overall, I, I liked Mako. I really did. I thought she was a good character. I, I can I can definitely say that this is uh, a very enjoyable character for some, but you know me, I've just kind of had a problem with that type of high school girl mm -hmm. in general. And I would like to thank the company for bringing Mako in because I can really crystallize my feelings for that. So I, I'd like to explain that really quickly, okay. why I have yeah. a problem with... Um, the uh, overly cutesy high school girl kind of characters, you know? I f Personally, I feel like the creators of these characters are trying way too hard, and I don't buy into that type of cuteness. It's kind of like Dot from Animaniacs. A Animaniacs. <laughs> how she's always saying she's the cute one. And okay. I'm like... No, you're not cute. And that's really <laughs> annoying kind of thing. And, um... Oh, I just... I just had it. I just had it. Hang on, hang on. No, it's starting it's to like, spread. Um, <laughs> to, to me, when those type of characters come on the screen, it's like... It's not like... I'm thinking, Oh, this character's cute. I'm thinking, This character is screaming in my face, Telling me to tell her she's cute kind of thing. Does that make does that so, make sense? So once again, I think this is what CT was saying earlier. I think the show is self-aware at that point. Yeah. I know, I, I know. Yeah. But so, it's just to a, a certain extent. It's just yeah, a, yeah. a yeah. personal it's a personal annoyance for me that type of character. Yeah. And Mako yeah. magnifies that like 10 times even though it's making fun of it. I get tired of it and, really and quickly. I, you know, I don't know if it's making fun of it. But I think a lot of what Gynax and now Trigger, the guys at Trigger do, is they they just incorporate that, but they 
make it ten times as big, Mm -hmm. basically. And it's almost like it's paying homage and it's making a little bit of fun of it, but it's telling you why it's worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And I think that's what Mako is. Mm -hmm. I honestly think that Mako is what... I think Mako is the character type that Ryuko needed, too. I think... Yeah. She she's going a mile a minute, and I think that's creating. I think that created inertia, which then became the momentum that Ryuko was able to ride um, to the end of the show mm-hmm. with her confidence in herself and her friends and stuff. And so, um, yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I it's hard for me to imagine who else could have done it. It wasn't. It wasn't glowing nipples guy, really. <laughs> no, no. All he really did, I mean, he was there he for just her. Everyone, everyone was there to back up Ryuko. Right. But a lot of them, you know, providing context here, explaining stuff there. Yeah. Maybe but, the sister near the end of the show. Kind of. Per, yeah. yeah, I mean, Kinda. but you know, Mako, Mako was there pushing her forward when she mm-hmm. thought she couldn't budge. Because, mm-hmm. like you said, she's a great foil to Rico. Yeah. I think yeah. I think that not a clashing of personalities but such a harsh contrast just made it so that this unlikely duo were able to complement each other so well. Yeah. I mean, and I think overall she also makes it a fun show. Yes. Um, absolutely. Which, which is what which is what Kill the Kill is trying to do. I think a lot of the times is there is they're trying to have fun with these kind of I guess you could call them stereotypes of anime and i think that they did a good job with mako i mean there are other elements of the show where i'm not you know really on board i mean the guy being naked all the time sometimes is like okay but i mean but i i I still think she shares kind of a similar element of not knowing when to pull back at the right time okay for a couple instances it's like when she turned into the gigantic blood monster thing if she just like hugged her and started crying and that's it i'd be okay with that but then she started doing her whole crazy rant thing well this is supposed to be a really intense scary moment it's like eh, not so scary anymore <laughs> and then well, also one particular moment when uh what's the really big blonde guy's name gamagori. gamagori gamagori when he like protected her and took a hit and you thought just for a second he might be dead or something at the end right yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah. like it's like, oh my gosh, this is really... And then Mako leans over and goes... Water. <laughs> and shoots like water jets out of the, out of her eyes. It's like, okay, so, moment ruined. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's actually one of the moments where I, I kind of agree with you. Because yeah. It was a little too far. But, I mean, I can understand because Mako's never going to... She's not nope, the type of character nope, to she, stop. She'll never <laughs> be <laughs> serious. Yeah, you're like, you, you can't pull that back. And yeah. I, I totally respect that. Like, they went. They just mm-hmm. went. Yeah. And, you know, it's over the top and it's ridiculous and that's kind of what the show is. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh... Mako, Mako 2014. If you like this episode <laughs> of the fan voice, please like uh, and share and comment <laughs> with hashtag Mako 2014. <laughs> uh, if she got a spinoff, so many people would be hype about that show. I'd watch it. I, <laughs> I she would, got a, she I would like a probably have movie. a seizure watching that or something. <laughs> it would, it would just, just be her uh, the whole time doing her. Oh like, my god! Re- like talking about she could talk thing. a whole. Yeah, yeah. She could, <laughs> oh the scissors god. across yeah, the, the scissors hair across thing. her hair whenever she talked about Rico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh great! And then uh, the folding of the boobs. Yeah. yeah well, man. that yeah, that's always really and funny. A bunch of other. I don't even. So um, one of the, one of the things I, I actually wanted to talk um, about in this discussion is what you guys think of Ragyo and Satsuki, because they're not like they're kind of my well, it's not really my main problem with the show. Like I said earlier, I think my main problem with the show is that the show just jumps around a lot in these kind of big themes. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like Ragyo and Satsuki could come to that a lot. There's a whole thing with incest. Ha! This show. Uh, I yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> no no go ahead. What were you gonna say? I'm actually curious. I love it. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, I don't think it's hot or anything. Okay. Well, no. Um, I mean, I, just, I don't think you're supposed to. I, okay, I, Ragu and Satsuki is uh, the the mother is Ragu and the, the yeah. rainbow okay, hair. Yeah. Satsuki okay, is okay. Yeah, rainbow yeah, hair yeah. and eyebrows. How about that? Yeah. 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 There you yep. go. Yep. Rainbow hair. I yep. like it. Yeah. Okay. I figured. Yeah. Okay. So no, I I love it. Because it just, 
it immediately establishes how sinister and flat out evil Ragiro is. Okay, because Satsuki's not into it. She tolerates it. She hates her mother. Um, yeah, she's and trying that much to is kill pretty her. much clear. Yeah, from the very she's beginning. been plotting to do this for decades, and so um, I think I think I don't think Ragiro looks at Satsuki as her daughter per se. Like genuinely, I think more of just like sort of like the novelty of a daughter. Because Ragiro has bigger things in mind, and whether Sasuke is there to help her accomplish that or not is irrelevant. Because, I mean, eventually it gets to the point, well, yeah, well now Sasuke is resisting Ragiro, mm -hmm. and Ragiro is still going to do it. Yeah. And so, I thought... I thought the relationship was great. I love them. I love them both as characters too, and their character designs, how their, their appearance and everything. You have Satsuki, who is just the embodiment of power and resolve, and um, a, a huge, another great foil to Ryuko, because for the longest time we thought that Satsuki was the villain, and I'm sure a lot of people early on in the show suspected. It might have been way too obvious, but I think people still like the idea of Satsuki being the one who killed Ryuko's father and stuff. Mm -hmm. But then we have Ragiro, who is just an, an even bigger body of power and resolve. She's kind of like the god behind the god, very similar to the Spiral King in the Anti-Spiral. Absolutely, yeah. And so, as individual characters, they're great, and I find... Yeah, the the whole in, the, the whole incest thing, I think I think it's just I think that's just a discharge from Ragiro, uh, a, a discharge of maybe some some lust and just some just, just straight up evil. And um, Okay. She's had, she's they, in charge and she knows it. Well, okay, so that's that's definitely something like it's a it's a power play. Um, this bath scene Yes. That's that's just a power play. Um, and at least it feels like it. Um, I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah, and I mean I think my my problem is 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 once again I feel like they, they're bringing these things up and it feels like there should be something more there. It feels like somebody should be saying something about, you know, something a little bit more about that i guess i just want more than just the bath scene is, or more is, than just the creepy touching or more you know like gonna if, you're gonna, if you're gonna yeah. go into that well yeah and i mean that's that, that threw that's just me over i mean too much me. <laughs> i mean she that one i totally agree with ct that's just she's fucking evil obviously yeah. um and she's incredibly messed up which it's what they're trying to show i just felt like I, if you're trying to say something there with that, you know, say something about it. But instead, it's just like, like you were saying, she's evil, which it's a power play, right? Like, that's what it's supposed to be. And I guess that's fine, but I don't love it. <laughs> be and I think specifically for the reason that it's just there for that. Mm -hmm. And I can understand why you would like it, because it's like the penultimate of like, like you were saying, evil. Mm -hmm. like, that's I fucking think... messed up. Who is this chick? Why is she fucking, like, fingering her daughter in the bath? Like, it's messed up, right? Yeah. And to me, though, I'm like, there are a million ways you could show that. Mm -hmm. I felt like that was shock. Almost. Like, it was yeah. like it was shock value. And I was like, I don't know if I really appreciate that. I, I think it could be a lot more impactful if so much of the anime industry didn't use very similar themes like sexual things well to and i integrate think great other things you and know? i mean I, yeah i kind of get what you're saying especially the thing with incest i feel like japan sometimes has a problem Boy. with incest <laughs> but I that's mean, for another episode that's <laughs> a whole nother episode we'll just have an episode called incest 101 there you no, go. let's not what number at would all. that be <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> what number would that be? Damn it, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I mean, for me, I just, I, I, I was kind of like, eh, 
like take it or leave it, I guess. I I mean, it like I said, if they had gone a little bit further with that and said something else, it might have been kind of interesting. But well, as I said, it was a little more about shock value mm-hmm. to me. Um, now, what, what was the other thing? Oh yeah, um, I think one of the best parts about this show, though, is um, the kind of the twist in the middle of Satsuki rebelling. Against her mother? Yes. yes. I thought the misdirection in the first half of the series was great. Yeah. And once again, it's a little bit more of like a shock thing. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like this, this show goes for a lot of that, where it's kind of like a shock and like a these over-the-top moments that you're just supposed to go like, what the hell just happened, right? And I felt like the twist is a good example of that mm-hmm. in this show, where I personally wasn't really expecting it. I don't know about you guys. No, no. I was not expecting i i did i didn't i know someone who was expecting that but when okay. but when we see her sword just come out of Roger's yeah. chest suddenly that threw me off and no i loved it i think that i think that whole twist was really built around satsuki as a character yeah too because there's a lot of characters in this show that you absolutely love to hate Ragiro and nui are the best examples I love, I hate Nui so much. I wanted her to die so much because she was so good at being so twisted <laughs> and uh-huh. evil. She was so good at being the character that she was. I wanted her to die so much. And so at this point, before the twist, we're, look, we're looking at Satsuki as the opponent. We're backing up Ryuko. We're seeing it through Ryuko's eyes. And, and so... With that twist, we now see Satsuki in a different light. She wasn't, to me anyway, She Satsuki was never a character that I loved to hate. She was, before the twist, a character that I, I, I liked, but I didn't really know why. Like, she was one of the bad guys that I happened to like or something. You yeah, know? yeah. She was pretty honorable, like, all the time. Very noble, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and it's nice that her whole character is built around that. Because, mm-hmm. and once again, that's kind of like a whole misdirection, like, She's very noble. She's very devoted. Oh, wait, no, she's not. Because she just <laughs> stabbed her mom through the chest. Yeah. Right? So that was that was definitely, ve- that was really interesting to me. And, and, and kind of like a, a little <laughs> bit of a shock moment. And it was like, wow, that was, that was really well done. What I didn't like was that then Satsuki, so she, you know, she goes against the rebellion. And she was so... She was so stubborn about the fact that what she did was right. Now, she destroyed, like, half of Nuda's Beach, right? She goes, well, I had to do it because of this, this, and this, and I have no regrets. And then, like, three episodes later, I felt like now she's suddenly this soft character. She's like, no, guys, don't bow to me. I'm not the leader here. I'll be on the front lines. Hmm. And then she's like, I feel really bad. I've asked a lot of a lot of people. Yeah, but you were trying to do it for a noble cause, Right. And, like, you were That's right. True. I mean, she was 100% right about all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly she's just kind of, she's a little more soft. And I don't know, I don't know why, but to me, I was kind of like, I liked the older version. Like, and even after, like, especially after the twist, because I'm like, she's the same character, but she's good. Yeah. And, like, that's interesting, <laughs> right? But then I felt like they kind of went back on that. They were like, well, now she's a good guy. So we need to make her a little bit softer, Super maybe. Yeah. Well, I, I think I think sh- I think Satsuki and Ryuko both were both very stubborn as characters and to each other. Um, yeah. For a while, for a bit anyway, there was sort of a three-way battle going on. Um, the Ra- Ragiro versus the Academy versus New to Speech, mm-hmm. and um, I think. I, I just think that Sasuke and Ryuko realized, like, like they, they were both starting to understand where the other was coming from, especially towards the end when Sasuke gave Ryuko permission to punch her in the face. And she was trying to do that, but then the, the Elite Four, mm-hmm. the council members, always got in the way, and... They were all like, oh, if, like, if you can't even get through them, like, what good are you? And, like, and, like, they both just realized, like, both of them just, both of them have a team of, in their words, idiots that will <laughs> back them up to the very end. 
And so I think they just, in that moment, they both understood, I, they, I think they both understood that they had the same drive. And so I think they both had to soften up because they both had truths to face and um, they had to work together. If they were fighting for the same cause, if they were fighting the same enemy, then it only makes sense for them to join forces. But these, these clash, there, there is a clash in personality. They are foils to each other that clash and don't complement. Okay. So, so you, so you're saying that it's, it's more of like a, like once again, like you were talking about, like real about Ryoko's growth, like Satsuki softening a little bit is part of that, maybe. Yeah. Well, there's there's growth in both of them. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. They're, they they both have resolve and they both know what they need to do, but it gets to a point where they both have to face each other and face a lot of facts mm -hmm. about each other, and so their resolve needs to shift a bit. Because if they can't accept that, then they don't have resolve. And so, I don't know. That, I, that's... Yeah, I mean, th no, it's, it's a, that's a really good point. I, I think for me, it was just... Maybe it was just a, a You don't a think resolve bit. couldn't be accomplished with keeping a stern attitude? Well, I suppose, but... Um, <laughs> I suppose it's hard. It's hard for me to. It's hard for me to answer that just because mm -hmm. I'm personally very satisfied with yeah. how it ended up playing yeah. out. Yeah, it it clicked to me, mm -hmm. and I don't think this lessens Satsuki as a character personally. Okay. Um, she's she still struts her stuff, definitely. No, and that and that's and that's that's true, especially near the end. Um, I just for me, I felt like you know the there were a couple episodes there. Where it felt like they changed her character maybe a little bit too much. Actually, no. I think they changed her character too quickly. And I think maybe that's, once again, going back to, like, things are changing quickly. Did you guys you both know? see Captain America too? Yes. No, I did not. But you can go ahead and talk about it. Well, I was just going <laughs> to briefly talk about this reminds me kind of how um, Black Widow, her attitude... Towards him? Made a total 180, just in general. Yeah. You know, she, before she was this total, like, whatever, not give a shit about anything kind of person, just get stuff done. But in in the second one, she was really, like, charismatic and, like, making jokes here and there and stuff like that. I was like, whoa, this is really abrupt <laughs> yeah. kind of thing. It, it didn't, like, sit quite well with me. Yeah, and I, I think, uh, you know, I think maybe that's the difference mm -hmm. you know there is that ct thinks that that's like you that's said okay. it clicked with you yeah mm -hmm. and i think i don't know with me i just maybe it was just too quickly i think that might have been the problem i just felt like but i understand that and i i think i understand where you're coming from for me i was a little like 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 you were saying like you know you can still be stern you know you can still be the same character mm -hmm. um and yes you've gone through a lot and yes you can change but I don't know. Yeah. Felt like that. I don't know. So, um, I mean, so, and actually, here's another, here's another question. So, the whole concept of life fibers, actually, did you guys like that? Not, like, well, I, could, I know that <laughs> you liked it, because actually, I think that was the one thing that we might have talked about before, I don't remember. I don't recall. I don't, <laughs> I don't remember either. Yeah, anyway. But, um... I don't know if, I don't know what, what, what you were going to say, but the whole, I mean, life fibers are kind of the main bad guy. Basically, the world originating from clothes. Yeah, yeah. Said. And I mean, it's like what CT said. I mean, the, the, it's a lot about nudity and not letting clothes and the, really fashion control you. I, I think just all around the concept of clothing at such a huge magnitude was a very tough pill for me to swallow. <laughs> Okay, so um, wait. But I I I have a bigger I have a bigger thing to talk about, kind of relating to that, but I can leave it for later. No, you can go ahead, chat it out. Well, I think it because it, it's kind of a summation of the whole thing. I feel like I don't know. Maybe it's I don't know. It's it's just so much surrounding clothing and mm -hmm. all around 
such a uh, impact of appearance was is it isn't a concept that I've never felt was so dire or traumatic kind of thing. Okay, so personally, want to shout out. This goes back to a theory I believe in about this show being more about women. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And and I really think that that's what they get from it, especially. Yeah, right. Um. So I mean, I because I agree with you. I've never mm-hmm. been like that. And so yeah. I kind of struggled with that. I was like, what the fuck is with this right. beach? Why do I care? Why are they nude? What does this... Oh, that's what it means, right? It kind of like, clicked abs- around like absolutely halfway through the series. It, in, in the world, appearance is... Important. Wh- whether they like it or not, it's important. such a larger yeah. impact for a woman. But I guess just... Since I'm a man, it's one of the things that just never really clicked with me. Well, it goes back to... Th- I when I look at this series, one of the things I th- always think about is this issue with like Barbie's proportions being so impossible, in, in proportionate <laughs> yeah. and stuff, and it's like, oh, this is ruining girls' lives, blah 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 blah. And I, I'm just like, I've I've never looked at my muscular Dragon Ball Z character and be like, this this makes me feel bad about myself. Yeah, and I mean, <laughs> just coming from like the fact that I have two sisters I'm very close with, mm-hmm. I think I get that a lot. Yeah. Where I'm like, I, it's different, I think, for women in this world. Right. Body issues are are a big thing in media, especially. Yeah. And I mean, they are for men to a certain extent, but I think much more so for women. Absolutely. Um. So for that, like, and that's Cause, why, like... Because what I see, I can definitely see um, the timeline of a growing woman's life in it. Like, you have yeah. development, ashamed of the body, then the period thing, and then I feel like the part where, like, clothes start taking over the world is the period where they're basically enslaved by a schoolgirl outfit and mm-hmm. all have to wear the same thing. And then the closing remark is, you can wear whatever you want now. And the whole thing about, people are people and clothes are clothes. Yeah. It's... It's just, it didn't hit as deep as I would have okay. liked it to, and, you know? And I, so I agree, and I think for me that's because it was, it was, like I said, it just jumped. Mm. You know, it jumped between those different things, and that was a major problem with me because I felt like the whole show changes when it goes to those, it's talking about different things the whole time, you know? And sometimes it talks about, like, Raggio and, and, growing up in your parents' legacy. And that changes the whole show, mm. to me, at least. And it was like a jump every time, like jumping on board a new thing. Um, and so that's why sometimes the show just, to me, felt like it was jumping around and a little bit too much. And, you know, I mean, you know us, I think, CT. We, we, like, we like Mushishi so much. Yeah. Right, where the theme is like, there right? yeah yeah you know and it's talking about the same thing not the same thing but the same overarching concept it, in every episode it, it, and it basically i don't know it fights against like 90 percent of anime as far as like um pacing pa- pacing, pacing it definitely fights themes. against pacing not i wouldn't well, i wouldn't agree not themes but themes, like um but like thematic consistency narrative tools like, okay yeah. or uh, yeah um, yeah, it, I get there's it. nothing silly about it. There's no boobs anywhere, and <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess that's why I love and it. And I mean, so <laughs> I don't think the Kill a Kill is worse for the boobs or the fan service. Um, I didn't like the pacing. I guess you could call it the fact that it kind of jumped around. That's what for me. And it sounds like you, CT, like you liked that. You liked the fact that it was like a journey with Ryoko, sort of, right? Yeah. The and one like, thing we're finding out a lot of those. things with her, and yeah. sometimes you know, like there's foreshadowing, and maybe you're able to pick up on things. But I think I think you as a viewer are pretty closely tied to Ryuko and uh, how she sees things. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, so it, it kind of sounds like. It was just kind of an agree to disagree <laughs> on a lot of <laughs> oh, these Oh, no, points, absolutely. But... And I think this is a perfect time to say 
that we don't have to agree on every no. little thing kind of thing. <laughs> hey, that's what this podcast is about. <laughs> this is what this is what the fan voice is about. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know what the fan voice is about is to help people not to follow the crowd or to disagree with people for the sake of disagreeing and being different. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I think that's also what the show itself is about too. Mm-hmm. And get ready for the most ultimate pun ever. <laughs> what the fan voice is and why what, what I think. I think what Kill a Kill itself is also projecting is that you don't need to follow in suit oh, with this. Oh, <laughs> shit. That was awesome. I, Brilliant. I am laying it down. <laughs> that, was a, that was an awesome pun. Thank you. It was totally on the fly as well. But it, it's true. It's definitely true. I mean, what the fan voice... What we want the fan voice to tell you is to do neither of those things just to project what's in your heart, even if it follows the most mainstream concept or it has the whole world against you. What your opinion is, you stick with that. Shout it out, man. Yes. And you can allow your opinion to be changed, too. That's the other thing. Absolutely. I mean, discussion and everything, if your opinion changes, don't feel like... You know that's a bad thing because I mean, because if but, but if you refuse to change even well, if you yeah. think in your heart then you're just being different to be different mm-hmm. kind of and thing, I mean you know? opinion comes a lot from experiences we've previously had mm-hmm. but it also comes from talking with people and gaining new insight into something it's that true. maybe you hadn't yeah. guessed I mean I really liked what you said about um, uh, you know kind of ragio being evil sort of right. Mm-hmm. I kind of liked that, yeah. and I liked how you were talking a little bit about Satsuki and, and her development and how that relates, and I got a little bit more, I feel like maybe I missed out on a lot of that, that I was a little distracted by other stuff going on in the show, you know? So that's a good example. That's a really yeah. good example. I mean, I think this uh, <clears throat> this whole discussion has really taught me that like I, I can really enjoy and appreciate everything behind what's directly on the screen it's just that there's so many things directly <laughs> on the screen that i have a problem with and i, I mean it. yeah it's hard to say something is a good series when you have to look past so many different things you know all right yeah i and i respect it and i respect yeah. it and like i said this isn't my favorite show of all time and I think I mean De- just as a f- what, one thing I will definitely not like bag on is the writing. It has really good writing, in my opinion. I mean, I think the writing has a lot to do with it jumping around, so I wouldn't agree. But or dialogue, um, dialogue, yes, very, I think, very, very strong, yeah. cool dialogue, yes, yeah. mm-hmm. and because yeah. it, and it's great. Because they drop in little lines for different characters that show so much into the character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's definitely good. Yeah. I think overall, it misses some marks, for me at least. But, I mean, um, I don't know. I guess I'm kind of a stickler for that. I like stuff like Shinsegayori, yeah. which most people are like, how can you watch that? It has no good characters. I'm like, <laughs> love it. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, all right. Well, good discussion. Yeah. This yeah, yeah. Great. Any final thoughts? Anybody? Um... Well, I just since since we're wrapping up, I just I I did want to quickly touch on Mako and Gamagori. Oh, uh, the okay. show is okay. shipping Mako and Guri hard, dude. They they're so canon it hurts, but they're <laughs> but they're anything but canon. I know. And so, oh man, I just I, I just love that. And so I think I think that also plays to how likable of a character is she's also a foil to gamagori gamagori is very very gamagori if you Mm -hmm. ask me is very very similar to satsuki except satsuki is a leader and Mm -hmm. gamagori follows her uh unconditionally and so i just i love it i think they're darling and actually if you look if you look during the credits um of the last episode of kill a kill where there's sort of just like pictures and stuff and you're you're getting a glimpse of what's what happened after everything uh-huh. and as everyone's rebuilding and stuff. There's one picture where the Elite Four, they're looking around the corner and Mako is off in the distance like wearing a dress. Gamagori is holding a bouquet of flowers and he's blushing. Look for it. It's there. It's, <laughs> it is... 
It's adorable. Shit, it is. Dude. It's so adorable. <laughs> Ga- Gamagori is one of those characters that's a teenager but looks like a man. In <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. He, I, 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 I love the fact that they were they were shipping that man. They were like, <laughs> they get on the hype hard. train for it's Mako the, and Gamagori because it's happening. It's one of the. It's it's like with Marceline and uh, Princess Bubblegum. <laughs> From Adventure Time, too. Like, maybe not as severely, but, like, dude. There's hints. Dude, it, it's it's implied. <laughs> pretty, uh, pretty regular. Uh, she, gave, she gave her a t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. For old man. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. yeah, aside from that, um, I think, I think he'll, look, it's, it's not my favorite, it's not my favorite show either. It's not my top ten. Yeah. I still think Gurren Lagann was a better show, but, um, I still definitely think that Kill a Kill is a solid show through and through and if you haven't watched it if you're considering watching it it's definitely a show that's worth going for and um see what you make of it too mm-hmm. Absolutely. um so definitely check it out and my closing statement will be hashtag mako 2014 <laughs> <laughs> and my closing statement will be hashtag mako t- i like it yeah. i like it high five high five oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah oh yeah <laughs> Hashtag Baco 2014. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I think you've heard just about every single perspective possible on this it's anime. It's kind of true, But yeah. we could be darn wrong. Show us a new perspective, and we, yeah. we'd love to hear it. But um, the, I think this was very well-rounded on all Yeah, elements. absolutely. I feel like yeah. it, we brought up a lot of points, and this just shows you, like, this is a good anime that you can't just, like, take somebody's opinion for it's not no it's not absolutely a, it's not. not a straightforward anime in any, no in any, I, I think any just, means just about every single person would have a different a opinion. different reaction in, in to a group it. of friends kind of thing yeah you know? oh by far yeah because yeah. yeah. i mean you're really gonna have you have different reactions to everything mm-hmm. you take mm-hmm. things differently absolutely. it's definitely one of those shows yeah because like you said there's a lot going on right there's a lot to to take in and process so mm. but yeah if um so speaking of that i'm sure you have a different opinion so uh, um, we're on a couple out different our places. Special links, yeah. Everywhere. So um, you can email us at fan at thefanvoice dot com if you want to email pretty long response or we'll just give us ideas of new. Yeah, uh, absolutely. New we're always concepts. We're always on the look on look out for topics and yeah, and ideas absolutely. and stuff. Um, we're on Twitter, Fanvoice Podcast. Facebook, the Fan Voice Podcast. Yep. Facebook.com slash the Fan Voice Podcast. YouTube.com slash the Fan Voice Podcast. And then, of course, the Fan Voice.com, where really? we have articles of news and reviews. And, and where you can uh, look into all our different uh, podcasts listed, as well as YouTube, of course. Yep. Yeah. Of course. So, thanks for joining us, guys. And thank you, CT. Oh, yeah, for being on it the has podcast. been an honor. <laughs> it's been you awesome. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I had a blast. So, this yeah, was, this I'm was glad. super crazy. I'm glad. Yeah, <laughs> crazy eight, crazy eight, episode eight. Perfect. Yeah, crazy kill. We should kill. we should yeah. have you on episode like you know eighty eight and eighteen and stuff. I mean, all the eights. Keep with the theme. Well, yeah, we'll run it. We'll, <laughs> a running theme with it. Yeah. I'm still waiting for that other number. Oh, oh, the incest <laughs> oh, episode. God. <laughs> Shit, now we have to do that. Comment. (laughs) If you think you know which number the incest episode should be, please leave a comment. (laughs) (laughs) Top Uh, fan who gives us that number. (laughs) Uh, Alright guys, well, thanks for joining us on Fanboys Podcast Crazy 8. Thank you so much, Crazy 8. Kill a kill episode. And we will uh, see you guys next week. Yep. Alright, bye guys. Later. See ya. Thank you.